Hello everyone, welcome. So we know that there are so many reports about underage and girls and guys being taken advantage of during the PDD freak off parties. But what in the world do horses have to do with PDD and his parties? Let's find out. Diddy pulls up. He, uh, I just remember him walking in and asking everybody, hey, what kind of girls do you want? And like, you know, a few moments later, girls came in. I think somebody said they wanted Puerto Rican girls and just a bunch of them came in. Where, where did they come from? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was just, you know, that was just one of the, the, the many instances where, like, the power that, you know, this guy could get whatever he wanted. There was already girls there at the party, but I believe these girls came specifically to do whatever um, we wanted them to do. So during the press conference given by the lawyer, who says he's representing about 120 victims, alleged victims of the PDD operation. This is how he describes how these girls or men or victims would actually be um, induced to do whatever it is that Didi and his cohorts actually wanted them to do. Listen in. Here's a common theme, an MO, if you will. Typically, the victim is lured into a situation where he or she is given a drink. Typically, that drink uh, reported by these victims is apparently laced with something. Once that drink takes effect, the perpetrators perform all kinds of sexual acts on the victims, many times passing him or her around as other people watch and enjoy the show and then leave the victim ashamed, confused, injured, and wondering what happened. When the victim reaches out, he or she is told not to say anything. Sometimes there are threats of all physical violence or financial repercussions or bodily harm. In addition to what he just um, stated, he also did mention um, some of the substances that were actually found in the tests that some of these individuals had done in the hospital. Let's listen in again. You should know that more than 55% of the victims filed reports, reported this conduct to either the authorities, that is the police, or to hospitals. You should know that, that several of the individuals, and when I say several, I mean many, uh, who did in fact seek medical treatment were drug tested, and drugs were found in their system, weird drugs, drugs that you probably never heard of. One in particular that, that continues to pop up is a drug called xylazine or Trank, which based on uh, our research is known as a horse tranquilizer. What are the impacts of xylazine, this AKA horse tranquilizer? Let's hear a doctor give her um, professional opinion on what it is and what how it if, uh, impacts the body and how it could be used in the defense that the PDD's lawyer is already mounting. Let's listen in. The xylazine, because it's a horse tranquilizer, causes amnesia, what we call antral grade amnesia, meaning that the victim won't remember what happened while they're on that drug. And the cocaine keeps them active enough that they can participate in sex acts outside of their conscious awareness. So this is a very sinister thing to do to people. And then remember he was taping the victims the whole time. So who would do this? A psychopath, a sociopath, somebody who has no regard for, uh, for others, somebody who's a sadist, as we've been talking about, that the infliction of cruelty makes him, he enjoys doing that and putting them in humiliating positions. You really have to understand what is playing out here. Because the video evidence is, is used as if the video is used as evidence during the trial, what it will show is someone who is awake, who is not screaming and yelling and showing physical signs of, you know, struggling or fighting to be set free. And so what that in, implies is this person is awake, they're not struggling, they're not saying no. So therefore, they must want it, they must like it, so they are willing participants. So that is the tricky and evil impact of that tranquilizer on these individuals.
So here is Trump's lawyer giving us an inkling, a window into what his defense would be for PDD during the upcoming trial. I interviewed myself the different men who you know, were, were being brought sort of into Mr. Combs and this person's you know, intimate situation. Um, I've flown around the country. I've interviewed a large number of them. There's not the slightest inkling, according to the interviews that I've done, of anything that's coercive, non-consensual. Uh, nobody was too drunk. Nobody was too high. These were adults in a relationship. This is a 10-year relationship. We can't forget that. This is a 10-year relationship. And it was adults and consensual, and everybody who was there wanted to be there.